Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Level Test Management Certification. We are in chapter one talking about managing the test activities and we are still continuing with our next segment that is 1.2, the context of testing. And today we shall be deep diving into the next sub segment of this uh, segment that is 1.2.2, importance of stakeholders knowledge in the test management. And more importantly, we will be understanding that which stakeholder has what kind of significance and contribution to our test process. Well, to begin with, of course, uh, it's very important for us to understand that in the previous tutorial, we told you the list of test uh, stakeholders. Uh, however, every stakeholder has a different set of contribution and significance. So we need to further classify them into those categories where we can understand that who will be having more uh, impact on our test activities and which stakeholders will still be important for us, but may not be a direct impact makers as a part of the decision making or performing our required activities. So I can certainly use something called a stakeholder matrix, which will define that how I can categorize my different stakeholders into various categories. And based on that, I can be determinant on how to make use of them at what point of time, or how to consult them, how to interact with them, how to engage them, how to rely upon them. Uh, all these definitions can be easily made given that we can de determine the definition of each type of stakeholder. And this segment gives us the knowledge about the that. So let's get into this and first thing here to talk about is the introduction to it. So of course, in test management, it is crucial to consider the perspective and influence of various stakeholders. The stakeholder matrix often referred to as power interest matrix guides that test manager in prioritizing the stakeholders engagement and managing expectations efficiently. The stakeholder matrix is a strategic tool in the test management that fulfills the below. Number one, it utilizes the stakeholders' expertise with end user and technical team, providing feedback and insights on performance and security. Also supports risk management by highlighting stakeholders' interest and influence, encouraging proactive mitigation efforts, values diverse perspective with valuable feedback. So we may have multiple expectations from different stakeholders. Some people are direct decision maker about your test activities. Some people are just contributing, but may not be interested in what exactly you do to achieve that, but yet could be a great mentor or kind of direction provider at any point of time. So let's get into a deep dive and try understanding what the stakeholder matrix means to us and what could be the different partition in that. So to talk about that, we have a clear picturization here. If you see, we are categorizing these four groups of people of stake matrix into four quadrants called as promoters, latents, defenders, and apathetics. So let's get into a deep dive to understand who these four people are or these quadrants are and what they contribute us and how we can relate this to the real world. To start with the very first one in the uh, stakeholder matrix is promoters and they have high influence and high interest. The key collaboration with high influence and high interest, vital for shaping the test strategy and plan. So promoters, in simple words, could be related to our customers, could be of our test leadership, or even when we talk about things like people who define the project timelines, the project goals, or you know people who can be seen in, in terms of determining what needs to be done at what point of time, and they will have high contributions, high interest, and high influence both. That means these are the people who will be determining how the testing should continue at any point of time. And given that we are the test manager, we will still be seeking information from them to understand that at what point, what scope change is happening, what kind of additional activities might be required. So these are all those technical people who might be acting as consultants, customers who define the rule of testing, who define the scope of testing, and also let you define the required amount of testing to be done, right? The second group of people is called as latent, which have high influence but low interest. While they may not have a strong interest in your day-to-day -day task, their decisions are critical for resource allocation and high-level project direction. 
Indeed, these are the people who can be called as our project management or leadership, right? Leadership in the sense that executive management. These people have certainly high influence to determine what testing and how the testing will go on, but they may not have interest in your day-to-day -day activity. For example, they may not ask you for a very close monitoring that tell me how many test cases did you execute today, right? They might be more on the milestone basis that as, as on this particular milestone, what exactly have we achieved and how far have we reached our goal? How are we progressing? What is our strategy to do the next? And are we, do you think as a test manager that uh, we are on track, on schedule to complete the remaining activities? But they will not be someone who will be interested in how are you drafting your test cases? How are you executing your test cases? Which execution failed and what was the defect report for that? But they will be more of like guiding you and kind of like providing you all that information, what you need to determine your future steps. The third category or third quadrant is called as defenders. They have low influence, but high interest. They often provide qualitative feedback and kept, uh, can be kept engaging through regular updates and involvement in specific discussions. So here I may include all my key stakeholders who have any kind of direct interest in our activities, be it about the development team, be it about the service providers like web services, the API team, the database team, all these stakeholders will have direct interest or high interest in what we are doing because any kind of test case failures they will have a direct engagement in sorting out the issues but they may not define what testing to be conducted okay low influence low influence does not mean that they don't have any influence low influence means that they will not be determining what to do but on certain test case failure they will still be giving us some kind of inputs that hey i just found that during the reproducibility or root cause analysis that your test cases did not have this. I may take this as an input and define my test case for the better or may also ignore saying that, no, no, this is the strategy and that is where we feel we are doing better and this is the reason we have not included that. So they may not be the direct influencers for you to define the test steps, but they would be very much interested in what you do and how exactly uh, the outputs impact their work. So developer, database architects are the people who have any kind of fixation involved, the services team, they will be directly involved in the API supplies and fixing the API issues. So all these people could be put into the defenders. And the last one is apathetics, and these people have low influence and low interest, though not closely involved, updating them on significant milestones and seeking their inputs on particular issues can yield unique insights. So they are more of like your SMEs, solution providers, consultants, or directors uh, from different segments like design or testing or development. And SMEs, uh, what we meant, are technical experts. So these people are generally consulted when we have issues in the project or our activities. For example, being a test manager, if I have, I have been stuck with a particular requirement or I have no idea what exactly to do further beyond the minimum testing what we have performed, then I can consult these uh, solution providers, technical experts from testing, uh, domain experts, and they will be giving us insights on what to do next, right? But they may not be someone who will be directly interested in what you are doing in the project, and they also may not be someone who is directly influencing your project. You seek their suggestions and insights in, you know, when you need them. And that is where we put them into the last category, apathetics, and that's how the team can help. So now you need to recognize your stakeholders and put them into these four quadrants and define the protocols of communications that when these people should be consulted, when these people should be provided with information and how to get aligned to their inputs. For example, project managers, they will change they, if they make any change in the project plan. I'm a direct person who is impacted by this change. So I should consistently be in touch with these progress made. If there's a change in the schedule, I should know that. So, you know, we, we just can't talk about, uh, ignore about latents. And same way, this is how we should do it for all other quarters. So having it clear, we'll have better definitions to when to interact with stakeholder and how to consult different stakeholders. Finally, to add, the test manager's roles includes compiling a detailed stakeholder list and understanding each one's connection to the testing activities using the stakeholders matrix to enhance the effectiveness of the test management practices. 
So that's why it is important for us to have them classified into different categories and define the way we communicate with them and utilize their skill set. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning. Thank you.